morning everyone today's topic for pg activity is pathology system for pap smear first of all i'll be discussing the anatomy of cervix human papilloma virus its pathogenesis and later i'll be describing the pathology system for pap smear in details anatomically cervix is divided into ectocervix and endocervical canal ectocervix is lined by mature squamous epithelium and endocervical canal is lined by mucus secreting columnar epithelium and the point where squamous and columnar epithelium meet is referred as squamous columnar junction and this unique epithelial environment of cervix renders it highly susceptible for infection with human papilloma virus infection it's a dna virus based on genotype they are divided into high oncogenic risk and low oncogenic risk high oncogenic risk human papilloma virus that is hpv 16 which accounts for 60% of overall cervical cancer hpv 18 accounts for total Rest of the 10% of the cervical cancer. Why? Low risk human papilloma virus causes sexually transmitted vulva, perineal, and perianal warts. That is carnaloma acuminatum. The ability of human papilloma virus to act as carcinogen depends on the viral protein E6 and E7 protein. While E6 protein interfere with the ability of tumor suppressor protein, that is P53, and promote its degradation by the proteasome. E6 also upregulates the expression of telomerase, which leads to cellular immortalization. While, while E7 protein binds with the hypophosphorylated form of RB gene, which is its active form, and promotes its degradation by proteasome. E7 also binds and inhibits P21 and P27, which are two important cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitors. Removal of this control enhances cell cycle progression and impairs the ability of cell to repair DNA damage. The classification of cervical precursor lesion has evolved over time. Initially, there were three-tier classification system, which has been recently simplified to two-tier classification system, in which CIN1 renamed as low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. And CIN2 and CIN3 combined into one category and referred as high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion does not progress directly to invasive carcinoma. Most of the cases regress spontaneously, and only a small percentage, that is 10% of the cases, progresses to high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. In contrast to LCL. High grade squamous intraepithelial lesion is considered to be at high risk for progression to cervical carcinoma. On microscopy, this is the normal squamous epithelium, and in CIN1 there is mild dysplasia with coelocytic atypia, and in CIN2 there is progressive atypia with expansion of immature basal cell above the lower third of epithelial thickness, and in CIN3 there is diffuse atypia. loss of maturation and expansion of immature basal cell to the epithelial surface to reduce mortality from cervical cancer cytological screening by pap smear came into existence this by pap test or papenkulow test which was named after george papenkulow who introduced this technique to the world in 1928 pap test is a surface biopsy to examine cells collected from the cervix and vagina and has been accepted as an effective cervical cancer screening measure This test involves microscopic examination of cervical cell obtained by scraping the ectoendocervix including transformational zone. According to WHO the first routine screening be performed at the age of 35 years and the age range of screening be limited to 35 to 55 years and screening be done every 5 to 10 years instead of 3 years. Human papilloma virus HPV DNA testing may be added to cervical cytology for screening of women more than equal to 30 years of age women who have had normal cytology result and are negative for hpv can be screened every 5 years but the women who have had a normal cytology result but test positive for high risk hpv dna should have cervical cytology repeated every 6 to 12 months of interval pap test comprises of three main stages it is collection of cervical smears fixing and staining the smear samples cytological examination and interpretation which is done by bethesda system for pap smear it was introduced in the year of 1988 and get revised in 1991 2001 and finally in 2014 aim of bethesda system was that 
terminology must be clinically relevant, consistent, reasonably reproducible and flexible, reflect the most current understanding of cervical neoplasia. The pathology system describes in detail all the following components and they are specimen type, specimen adequacy, general categorization, interpretation or result, adjunctive testing, computer assisted interpretation of cervical cytology, educational notes and comments appended to cytology reports. As you all know that cervical specimen or pap smear can be divided into two types, conventional pap smear and liquid based cytology. Specimen adequacy. What is specimen uh, adequacy? First of all, cellularity is the most important quality indicator for specimen adequacy. And depending on the adequacy criteria, cervical specimen can be categorized as satisfactory or unsatisfactory. There is minimum squamous cellularity criteria both for conventional preparation as well as for liquid based cytology. In case of conventional preparation, minimum number of approximately 8000 to 12000 of well preserved and well visualized squamous epithelial cells are required. And in case of liquid based cytology, minimum of 5000 of well visualized oblique or well preserved squamous or squamous metaplastic cells are needed. The presence of transformation zone sampling is not necessary for an adequate specimen. Only squamous cellularity is necessary. An adequate transformation zone sample requires at least 10 well preserved endocervical or squamous metaplastic cell singly or in cluster. The presence or absence of a transformation zone component is reported in the specimen adequacy section unless the woman has had a total hysterectomy. When we call specimen unsatisfactory for evaluation, we have to specify its reason. If the specimen is rejected or not processed, as in case of specimen is not labeled or there is broken slide, or if the specimen is processed and examined but unsatisfactory for evaluation of epithelial abnormality because of presence of some obscuring factors like presence of blood uh, due to inflammatory cells, mucus, lubricants and so on. Here in this image there are approximately 75 of cells, 75 cells and if all the field have same level of cellularity then this this specimen is categorized as unsatisfactory for evaluation. Here in this image, there are approximately 500 cells and minimum of 60 such fields with similar level of cellularity are needed to call this specimen adequate or satisfactory for evaluation. Here in this image, there are approximately 1400 of cells and minimum of 6 such fields with similar level of cellularity are required to call this specimen adequate or satisfactory for evaluation. Specimen in which more than 75% of squamous cells are obscured should be termed unsatisfactory assuming that no abnormal cells are identified. And the percentage of cells obscured, not the slide area obscured, should be evaluated. All the minimum cellularity criteria should also be applied there. Here in this image, uh, there are approximately more than 75% of epithelial cells are obscured by inflammatory cell. Hence, this specimen is considered as unsatisfactory for evaluation. When there is no cellular evidence of neoplasia and they are reported as negative for intraepithelial lesion or malignancy, and this has to be stated in general categorization and or in interpretation or result section of the report, organism or other non-neoplastic findings which are optional to the report to be written along with additional to this statement. Let us discuss some normal cellular element which we usually see in a cervical cytology specimen and they are squamous cell, endocervical cell, endometrial cell and lower uterine segment cell. Superficial cells they are derived from the outermost layer of the cervical epithelium and their nucleus is highly condensed that is pycnotic and nuclear cross-sectional area is 10 to 15 micrometers square. Cytoplasm is usually abundant, eosinophilic, and they may contain keratohyalin granules. Superficial cell is when seen during proliferative phase of menstrual cycle and in the presence of irritation. Intermediate cell, they are usually present in the middle or intermediate layer of the squamous epithelium and their nucleus is larger than the superficial cell. Nuclear cross-sectional area is 35 micrometer square. Finely granular chromatin pattern usually seen. Nucleus is elongated with a longitudinal nuclear groove 
and it serves as the basic size reference for other cell in cervical cytology specimen. Intermediate cell usually seen during pregnancy and with the use of progesterone agent. Parabasal cells are the least mature cell in cervical cytology specimen. They are derived from deep cell layer. And their nucleus is larger than intermediate cell. Nucleotosexual area is 50 micrometer square. Cytoplasm is usually smaller and nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is higher than in intermediate or superficial cell. And they are usually predominant during postpartum and postmenopausal state where there is lack of hormonal stimulation. Endocervical cell can have stromal origin or endometrial origin and their nucleus size is highly variable. Nuclear cross-sectional area is 50 micrometer square. Finely granular nuclear chromatin with small nuclei usually seen. Cytoplasm is usually vacuolated or granular. This cell exhibit polarity with nucleus at one end of the cytoplasm and mucin at the opposite end. This cell when viewed from side, they form picket fence appearance and this cell when viewed in face, they give classic honeycomb appearance. Endometrial cell, here the cell nucleus is smaller than that of intermediate cell and nuclear cross-sectional area is 35 micrometer square. Nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is high. Exfoliated endometrial stromal cell, when arranged in dense aggregate, surrounded by glandular epithelium, they form a characteristic appearance known as exodus ball due to its presence during the end of menstrual flow. Cells which are directly sampled from the lower uterine segment are usually columnar, round to oval, having hyperchromatic nuclei. Branching gland can be seen in some groups. The glands are surrounded by stoma which may contain small vessels that appear to protrude from the surface in spindle or feathered pattern. We can discuss some non neoplastic findings which we can see along with the normal cellular element. They are squamous metaplasia, keratotic changes, tubal metaplasia, atrophy, pregnancy associated changes, reactive cellular changes associated with inflammation, radiation, interuterine contraceptive device. Glandular cell status post hysterectomy. Squamous metaplasia. Here the cell shows cytoplasmic differentiation from immature parabasal like cells to differentiated intermediate superficial cell. Nucleus is round to oval with fine evenly distributed chromatin. Cells having spindle cytoplasmic projection called spider cells are often seen in uh, conventional preparation due to disruption of cohesion of cellular attachment by the force of smearing procedure. Tubal metaplasia is a metaplastic phenomena in which the normal squamous epithelium is replaced by the epithelium that recapitulates that of epithelium of normal fallopian tube. Here the columnar ciliated endocervical cells occur in groups or as pseudostratified crowded groups. Nucleus is round to oval, pleomorphic, often hyperchromatic. Cytoplasm is discrete, contains discrete vacuole or goblet cell change, which we can see in this image. Keratotic cellular changes. Here, in parakeratosis, there is miniature superficial squamous cell with eosinophilic cytoplasm, and cells may be seen in isolation, or in sheet, or in whorls, and cell shape may be round, oval, or polygonal and nucleus are usually small and pycnotic. While in hyperkeratosis, enucleate mature polygonal squamous cells are seen and they may have keratohyaline granules in their cytoplasm. Empty spaces or uh, host cell nuclei may be seen. Atrophy is a normal aging phenomena which is associated with lack of hormonal stimulation. Here, the cells are arranged in flat modular sheet of parabasal like cells with preserved nuclear polarity. Nuclear enlargement with slight increase in nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. Chromatin is uniformly distributed. Autolysis may result in the presence of stripped nuclei. Active cellular changes associated with radiation. Here, the cell increase in cell size without increase in nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. Bizarre cell shape possible. Binucleation and multinucleation are usually possible here. 
Cytoplasmic vascularization can also be seen. As we can see in this image, similar changes associated with IUCD. Here, the reactive cell changes may be either in endometrial or intracervical in origin, and amount of cytoplasm usually varies. Large vacuoles create a signet ring like appearance and they can have nuclei. Sometimes they are associated with actinomyces infection. Let us discuss some organisms which we usually encounter in cervical cytology specimen. First is Trichomonas vaginalis. Here they appear as pear shaped organism. They can be round, oval, cyanophilic organism measuring 15 to 30 micrometer in diameter. And their nucleus is pale, vesicular, eccentrically located with eosinophilic cytoplasmic granules. They are usually associated with background changes in, which include um, mature squamous cell with small perinuclear halo called tick change and 3D cluster of neutrophils called polyballs. In uh, case of candida infection, budding yeast or pseudohypha can be seen. Spearing of, indo, uh, spearing of epithelial cell is more common and can be seen at low power even if pseudohypha are not prominent. And this spearing of epithelial cell by pseudohypha gives cis above effect. In bacterial vaginosis, here the individual squamous cell are covered by a layer of coccobacilli called closed cell which forms one of the diagnostic criteria and answer criteria. In actinomyces infection, here the organism are tangled in clumps of filamentous organism as cotton ball on low power or woolly ball due to radial distribution of filaments and they can be seen in the presence of IOD and in case of herpes simplex virus infection here the nuclei have ground plus appearance due to presence of intranuclear viral particles eosinophilic internuclear inclusion called cauti bodies can be seen multinucleate epithelial cells with molded nuclei can also be seen here as we can see in this image. In cytomegalovirus infection, here there is cellular and nuclear enlargement with large eosinophilic internuclear inclusion with P prominent halo can be seen. And they are usually seen in immunocompromised patient. Presence of endometrial cell in reproductive age group is normal finding in cervical cytology specimen. But if uh, endometrial cell are present in a woman of more than equal to 45 years of age are considered to be abnormal and we have to specify if it is negative for squamous interpithelial lesion. Let us discuss some epithelial cell abnormalities. A typical squamous cell and of undetermined significance refers to the changes that are suggestive of low grade squamous interpithelial lesion. Nucleus are approximately <coughs> Two and a half to three times the area of the nucleus of intermediate cell or twice the size of metaplastic cell nucleus. Nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is increased with minimal hyperchromatia and irregular chromatin distribution. Poorly defined cytoplasmic halo or cytoplasmic vacuoles resembling colocytes may be seen. When we call atypical squamous cell cannot exclude an high grade squamous interpithelial lesion when cells occur singly or in small groups or less than 10 cells and they may stream in strand of mucus. Cells are the size of metaplastic cell with nuclei 1.5 to 2.5 times larger than the normal and nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio may approximately that of high grade squamous interpithelial lesion. In low grade squamous interpithelial lesion cells are arranged singly in cluster and in sheets, and cell size is large with abundant mature well-defined cytoplasm. Nucleus is more than three times the area of normal intermediate cell nucleus and they are generally hyperchromatic with variable size. Multinucleation and binucleation are usually common. Nuclei are absent or inconspicuous. In peace keratinization with dense eosinophilic cytoplasm with little or no evidence of coelocytosis are usually seen here. In case of high grade squamous interpithelial lesion, cells are arranged singly in sheets or in sinchial like aggregate with variable size. Degree of nuclear enlargement is more variable than low grade squamous interpithelial lesion. Nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is higher in high grade squamous interpithelial lesion and contour of nuclear membrane is irregular with prominent indentation on groups. Squamous cell carcinoma can be of keratinizing. 
or can be of non keratinizing type in keratinizing cells are predominantly arranged as isolated single cell and less commonly in cellular aggregate nucleus vary markedly in area nuclear membrane are irregular and dense opaque nuclei are often present chromatin is coarsely granular and irregularly distributed with chromatin clearing tumor diathesis may be present but less common than non keratinizing while in non keratinizing cells are arranged singly or in sequential aggregate with poorly defined cell borders and nucleus is demonstrated as irregular distribution of coarsely clumped chromatin with chromatin clearing tumor diathesis is much more common and it consists of necrotic debris and broken down blood elements here we can see the keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma and non keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma When we call atypical endocermica cell not otherwise specified, when the cells are arranged in sheet and strips with cell crowding, uh, nuclear overlap, and or pseudo stratification, nucleus is three to five times the area of normal endocermical nucleus. My nuclear hyperchromation may be seen. Cytoplasm is abundant. Nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is increased with occasional nucleoli, and mitotic figures are rare. A typical endocervical cell favor neoplastic when abnormal cells are arranged in sheet and strips with nuclear crowding, overlap, and pseudo stratification can be seen. Cell groups with rosette or feathering can be seen here. Nucleus is enlarged and elongated with hyperchromatia. Coarse chromatin with heterogeneity can be seen. Occasional mitosis and or apoptotic debris can also be seen here. Uh, a typical endometrial cell here the cells are There is a small group, usually five to ten cell per group. Nucleus is slightly enlarged compared to normal endometrial cell, with mild hyperchromatia, chromatin heterogeneity, having small nuclei, and there is scant cytoplasm. And cell borders are usually ill-defined. In the cervical adenoma carcinoma in situ, here the cells are arranged in sheets in cluster. Pseudo stratified strips and rosette with nuclear crowding and overlap, and there is loss of a well defined honeycomb pattern. Nuclei are usually small or inconspicuous, and mitosis and apoptotic bodies are commonly seen. Nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is increased. Background is typically clean here. Endocarcinoma can be of endocervical origin, can be of endometrial origin, and can be extrauterine. depending on the cellularity endocervical is hypercellular endometrial is low cellularity and while in extrauterine cells are rarely seen depending on the arrangement of cell endocervical in endocervical carcinoma cells are arranged in strips rosette sheets with feathering having single malignant cell while in endometrial carcinoma cells are arranged in small cluster rarely having papilla single cell can also be seen while in extrauterine cells arrangement of cell varies depending upon the primary and mode of spread cell shape and nuclei of endocervical carcinoma are usually oval columnar pleomorphic while in endometrial carcinoma they are round irregular and usually smaller while in extrauterine they usually varies in endocervical carcinoma Uh, they are associated with high risk human papilloma virus infection while endometrial and in extrauterine carcinoma they are negative for high risk human papilloma virus here we can see the endocervical carcinoma endometrial carcinoma and extrauterine carcinoma malignant neoplasm other than squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma can be seen which is infrequently to the cervical cancer and they are spindle squamous cell carcinoma neuroendocrine tumors glassy cell carcinoma mucinous carcinoma of gastric tract malignant mullerian mixed tumor clear cell adenocarcinoma sarcoma malignant melanoma and so on at last adjunctive testing here we provide a brief description of the test method and report the result so that it is easily understood by the clinician in a computer assisted interpretation of cervical cytology here if the case is examined by an automated device we have to specify the device name and its result 
educational notes and comments appended to cytology reports which is optional here we give suggestion we should be concise and consistent with clinical follow up guidelines published by professional organization and this is the reporting criteria of cervical cytology given by the bethesda system these are my references